Today's the 30th of January 2020. My name is David Hickson and in today's market update we're going to be taking a look at some stock markets from around the world and discussing the concept of commonality. Before we do that I must ask you to please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. So let's start with a look at the S&P 500. This is the analysis that we've been tracking in these market updates. And my previous market update was on the 17th of January, which was on a Friday. It was this Friday over here. And at that time, I spoke about how I was expecting price to start moving down towards the 20-week cycle trough. I discussed in that market update the sequence of interactions between price and this purple line, the 20-day cycle FLD. And I mentioned that the next interaction we were expecting was going to be an F category interaction in which price would cross down below the FLD on its way down into the 20-week cycle trough expected round about the 10th of February or certainly in early February. So as you can see price did come down below that FLD and uh, it probably formed the 20-day cycle trough that we were expecting on Monday of this week it bounced back up towards the FLD in what we would describe as a G category interaction because that movement towards the FLD is in itself an interaction and then the H category interaction is what is expected next. If you are a fairly aggressive trader you might consider a short trade for the move down into this 20-week cycle trough which still lies a little bit ahead of us. So there isn't really a huge amount of new information. Everything has been going pretty much exactly as we expected. Is it possible that the 20-week cycle trough formed over here on Monday? It is possible, it is unlikely in my opinion, but it's certainly something that we need to keep aware of. As price approaches an important trough or a trough that we are waiting for, it's always useful to bear in mind that that trough might occur slightly early. We must also bear in mind the current state of the market in terms of how bullish or bearish it is. And as I've pointed out in many of my previous market updates, the market has been very consistently bullish in terms of either very exactly achieving the targets for price crosses below the FLD or failing to actually reach the FLD in the case of interactions that are expected to find support at the level of the FLD. So there has been a tremendous amount of bullishness in this market. Of course, the market has turned a little bearish in order to bring us down to this 20-week cycle trough. But as mentioned in my previous market update, I am still interested in the price move out of the 20-week cycle trough because that bullishness is likely to take some time to dissipate. Of course, if the market moves down very strongly into this 20-week cycle trough, then we will reassess the bullishness of this market and we might change our minds about that trade out of the 20-week cycle trough. One of the questions to ask when considering whether a trough has occurred early is how many days have passed since various other cycle troughs formed. And in this particular case, you can see the counts at the foot of the screen over here. There have been 58 bars since this 80-day cycle trough in early December. Now, the average length of an 80-day cycle is 68 days. And so, in theory, the 20-week cycle trough still lies 10 days ahead of us. Of course, cycle wavelengths vary constantly. Cycles in financial markets are very dynamic. Their wavelengths are always changing. But nevertheless, it is still a little early for us to be experiencing the 20-week cycle trough now. This count over here, 119 days or 17 weeks, is the count since the most recent 20-week cycle trough and the average length of the 20-week cycle is 136 days. So we expect another 17 days roughly to elapse before that 20-week cycle trough should form in the market. And so, therefore, it is likely that the 20-week cycle trough still lies ahead of us. So, everything is really going very much according to plan in terms of the analysis of the S&P 500. And so I thought I would take the opportunity to take a look at several other stock markets from around the world. Hearst introduced a principle of commonality, 
which tells us that markets, all financial markets, have many things in common. And one of the things that they have in common is the fact that cycles tend to form at around about the same time. The principle of commonality is a fascinating subject to discuss, and it's a fairly complex subject. It's not quite as simple as when a 20-week cycle trough forms in one market, then it's also going to form in another market. But what you will find is that there are many related markets around the world, and that they tend to form troughs and peaks at roughly the same time. Sometimes the magnitude of those troughs and peaks differs, but it makes for a very interesting study. And it certainly helps to confirm the analysis that you're looking at if you're only considering one particular instrument. So let's take a look at some other stock markets from around the world. And what I'm going to do is take us on a lightning tour of some Hearst Signals charts. Now, uh, this means that I don't have to keep flipping between workspaces. Uh, we can uh, very quickly size up the situation. So we're going to start here with the S&P 500. You can see that uh, this is the same analysis that we've been looking at with the 80-day cycle trough over here at the beginning of December, the 40-day cycle trough here on the 8th of January, I think that was, and the most recent interaction with the FLD was the F category interaction. Here you can see the 20-week cycle trough uh, looming ahead of us, and so this is exactly the same analysis that we've been considering in uh, these market updates. Let's take a look at another American market. For instance, the NASDAQ. Now, the situation in the NASDAQ is slightly different. As you can see, according to this analysis, the 80-day cycle trough did not occur on the 2nd of December, but about a week later on the 9th or 10th of December and it is positioned over there. We could debate that. I'm not going to do that now. It's a possibility, and certainly in terms of the analysis of the NASDAQ, I think it is very likely. It doesn't change things very much in terms of what has been happening, because again, on the 8th of January, we saw the 40-day cycle trough forming. The F category interaction, as you can see, is still the most recent interaction that occurred over the previous weekend. And in fact, let's take a look at a slightly closer chart to see just a little more detail here. And we'll take a look at the six-week chart. And here we can see how the F category interaction occurred over the weekend. Price came down, crossed below the FLD, achieved its target from that F category interaction and bounced back up again. We still have the 20-week cycle trough looming ahead of us in the NASDAQ and it is expected at roughly the same time. And so here we have a closely correlated market, obviously. It's also a US market. We have the same interaction between price and the FLD, very subtle differences, but the bottom line is that we are still expecting price to move down into a 20-week cycle trough, which is expected in early February. Let's take a quick look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. There is a three-month view of the Dow Jones and as you can see we have the F category interaction we have the same 80 day cycle trough and 40 day cycle trough on exactly the same dates I believe as the S&P 500 and we have the 20 week cycle trough looming ahead of us in about the first week of February so there is very little difference there are a few very subtle differences here and if we zoom in I've zoomed that chart in a little bit too far. There we go. If we zoom into the six-week view, then you can see that there is a subtle difference here. The F category interaction actually occurred last week Friday. The median price of that bar, I believe, crossed down below the FLD on Friday. And so we had a slightly earlier price cross. The target for that price cross was achieved. And price has, again, bounced back towards the 20-day FLD, and here, of course, is the 20-week cycle trough still lying ahead of us. So there are no really big differences. Those are all U.S. markets, and as would be expected, they're all really very similar. We have a the very similar analysis in all of them. Let's jump across the ocean and take a look at the FTSE, the UK market. Now, there are a few differences here that are very interesting and worth discussing. First of all, we have the 80-day cycle trough 
in the first week of December, not in fact on the 2nd of December, but I think it was on the Wednesday of uh, that first week of December. Nevertheless, uh, uh, very close to that, we have the 40-day cycle trough over here in the first week of January, but we have a fairly different shape to what has developed in those cycles, and it's a, a really nice shape that's worth looking at. So what I'm going to do is zoom in on this three-month view and look at the really very well-shaped M-shape cycle that we are seeing forming over here. The implication is clear. We again have a 20-week cycle trough looming ahead of us in about the first week of February. You can see the actual 20-week circle is over here in about the third week of February, so it's tending to be slightly later. Nevertheless, we are still expecting price to move down to form this 20-week cycle trough coming ahead. Now, this clearer cycle shape, if you like, is very useful because in the S&P 500, as you know, that shape has been very distorted. It's been really very, very bullish and it just keeps moving upwards and it's been very hard to identify the troughs when they occur. In the English market, the FTSE, it has uh, been much easier and the picture is certainly a good deal clearer. And if we take a look at the six-week view, you can see more clearly the 40-day cycle trough over here. Also, I believe on the 8th of January, and here you can see the F category interaction actually occurred on Tuesday of last week. So it occurred several days earlier than the US market. So it gave us a prior warning, if you like. You can see how similar markets move in a similar fashion, but they're not identical. You don't get an F category interaction happening at the same time on the same day in every single market. The target for this F category interaction has been achieved and you can see the system here is marking this pullback to the FLD on Friday of last week as the G category interaction and the H category interaction is what happened when price moved away on Monday of this week. That might be a little premature for a G and H category combination. It's still possible that we might see price coming a little closer to the 20-day FLD but the significance is still fairly obvious and fairly simple. We're still expecting a move down into this 20-week cycle trough, which is expected around about the same time, about the 10th of February. Let's take a look at the DAX, the German market. Now here we start seeing some more significant differences in the analysis. In particular, we have a 20-week cycle trough here on the 9th of December. Now, that is different to our analysis of the S&P 500 and the other markets we've looked at so far, which have an 80-day cycle trough on that date. Is it possible that the German market has a 20-week cycle trough, whereas the other markets have an 80-day cycle trough? Absolutely. That is what commonality means. It doesn't mean that the same trough occurs at the same time. It means that you will also get a prominent trough. They might be of the same magnitude. They'll certainly be of similar magnitude. Uh, here again, we have a 40-day cycle trough on the 8th of January, I believe. And in fact, we have a very similar sequence in terms of the interaction with the FLD. And if we take a look at the six-week chart, you can see the 40 day cycle trough occurring over here on the 8th of January and uh, here we have the F category interaction which occurred also over the weekend so in fact the same timing for the F category interaction but of course price is now moving in the DAX not down into a 20-week cycle trough but only into an 80-day cycle trough as you can see from this nest of lows and let's just pop back to the three-month view and we can see that a little more clearly here. Here is the nest of lows for the 80-day cycle trough. It's expected around about the same time but it's a lower magnitude trough because of the higher magnitude trough that occurred at the beginning of December. Nevertheless we still have an F category interaction which has occurred. Let's also take a look at the French market. This is the CAC 40, and the CAC 40 is uh, slightly clearer than the Euro stocks. Quite an interesting market to keep an eye on. Here again, we have a 20 week cycle trough as opposed to an 80 day cycle trough occurring at the beginning of December. 
We have the same sequence of interactions with the FLD, and you can see the most recent interaction was the F category interaction. Price is moving down into an 80-day cycle trough as opposed to a 20-week cycle trough. And if we take a look at the six week cycle here, you can see that the F category interaction occurred on Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. So it was slightly earlier and about the same time as the uh, UK market. Uh, and price is, of course, now moving down into this 80 day cycle trough over here. And let's jump across another ocean or several oceans and take a look at the Australian market. This is the ASX 200, the Australian stock market index. And here you can see a different picture in the analysis with at the beginning of December, a trough of only 40 day magnitude. And the trough at the beginning of January is a trough of 20 week magnitude. So again, we have a shift in the analysis the troughs are occurring on pretty much the same day as they are occurring in the other markets but they have a different magnitude so we're not going to look in detail at the reasons why that is but it makes for a very interesting consideration particularly in terms of understanding the interactions between price and the FLD so if we take a look at the six week view we can see what has happened since the 20 week cycle trough at the beginning of January and the recent drop down below the FLD was only a D category interaction according to this analysis. In other words, if the 20 week cycle trough at the beginning of January is correct, then that was a D category interaction. Of course, a D category interaction is also a short trading opportunity. It is less of a profitable opportunity than an F category interaction usually because price is bringing us down to a trough of only 40 day magnitude. But you can see from this nest of lows in the Australian market that we are expecting the 40 day cycle trough at around about the same time on about the 10th of February. And so here we are expecting a trough at the same time, although it is only expected to be a trough of 40 day magnitude and not a trough of 20 week magnitude. So let's come back to the S&P 500. Let me display the composite model line, which of course we use to give us an idea of the implications of the analysis. I showed the same composite model line in my previous market update. And as you can see, price has come down below the FLD as expected. It's now expected to come back to the FLD. The fact that it hasn't been able to reach that FLD, let me change that color. The fact that it hasn't been able to reach that FLD yet, it might still, but the fact that it hasn't yet is the beginnings of the sign of bearishness in this market, a bit of weakness. When price cannot get back to the FLD, it means that things are a little more bearish than we might have expected. Not very bearish, but there is certainly a bit of bearishness creeping in, which is why I say if you are an aggressive trader, you might want to take advantage of a short trade for the move down into the 20 week cycle trough. And so our expectation hasn't really changed from last week. We are still expecting price to move down into this 20 week cycle trough after which it is of course expected to bounce out of that 20 week cycle trough. As it arrives at that 20 week cycle trough, we will reassess the bullishness or bearishness of the market and decide how profitable a long trade out of that 20 week cycle trough is expected to be. I do hope that you found this market update interesting. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below this video. I look forward to hearing from you.